For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hello and welcome to Around the World in 8 Minutes, a show from People's Dispatch. This is a show of and for resistance as we delve into the stories of common people around the world who refuse to accept injustice and stand up for their rights. Before getting into our stories, we wanted to share a clip from Buenos Aires, where thousands gathered in the Plaza de Mayo to reject Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro's visit to Argentina, as well as his racist, sexist, homophobic, classist, anti-people politics. A vibrant festival was held under the slogan, Your hatred is not welcome here, and not them. Let's check it out. Today, our stories deal with three battleground states where the ruling class has attempted to deceive and co-opt the will of the people in order to hold on to their power. For our first story, we take you to Sudan, where the situation has escalated to an unprecedented level of violence and brutality. On Monday, June 3rd, over 100 protesters were killed by the militia Rapid Support Forces, RSF, in a violent eviction of the mass demonstration, which had occupied the area around the army headquarters in Khartoum since April 6th. <laughs> Sudan's opposition alliance has refused the offers to resume talks with the Transitional Military Council until the power is restored to civilians. The body responsible for the massacre, the RSF, is headed by the junta's vice president. Since then, the United Nations has, has announced a withdrawal of its staff from the country, and the African Union has su suspended Sudan from the body until it hands over power to civilian forces. Ethiopia's Prime Minister, Awi Ahmed, has since been appointed as a mediator to help pull Sudan out of the deadlock. The hundreds who were injured in the attack were rushed to the hospitals, but RSF men barged into various hospitals beat up and shot many medics and forced the patients out before laying siege to the hospitals. Tents of the medics pitched at the site of the mass demonstrations to provide first aid were also burnt down, and many were arrested. Over 500 kilometers to the south of Khartoum, the sit-in before the local army post in Ad Damazin, the capital city of the Blue Nile state, was also violently dispersed by the RSF, who burnt down all of the tents pitched there by the demonstrators. The demonstration in the city of Adbara, the capital of the River Nile state, where the anti-regime uprising began on December 19th, was also cleared by force. Amid this reign of terror, the junta announced its withdrawal from all the previous agreements that had reached with the opposition forces. The Sudanese Professionals Association, which has been spearheading the mass demonstrations since December, had already announced its withdrawal from any further negotiations, along with other political parties which it had come together with to form an umbrella organization called the De Declaration of Freedom and Change Forces to represent the protesters. The mass protests in Sudan began last December with the aim of overthrowing the regime of Omar al-Bashir, who seized power through a coup 30 years ago. The Sudanese Professionals Association, an association of various organizations representing doctors, pharmacists, lawyers, teachers, engineers, has been the driving force behind these protests, and it managed to organize massive sectors of Sudan's working class. Following Monday's massacre, the military junta announces withdrawal from the agreements it had previously reached with civilian forces in negotiations, and announced it will run the country for the next nine months, after which an election will be called for. Next, we take you to Algeria. Earlier this week, the Constitutional Council in Algeria canceled the presidential elections that were scheduled for July 4th and left it up to the interim president, Abdelkader Ben Salah, to set the new date. On Friday, hundreds of protesters took to the streets for the 16th consecutive week to protest the interim government and demand a total change in Algeria's ruling system. The protest movement, which forced Abdel Aziz Bouteflika's resignation from the presidency on April 2nd after weeks of mass demonstrations had called for a boycott of the elections. They argued that an election overseen by the same regime which they are trying to oust will only lead to its reconsolidation. Moreover, the protesters are also demanding a transi transition period led by the people approved by consensus. 
in the course of which they seek to completely root the ruling regime from state structures before holding elections. The election had been scheduled for July 4th by the Speaker of the House, Abdel Khader Ben Salah, on April 10th, which was one day before he was appointed as the interim president to replace Bouteflika. Ben Salah's appointment infuriated the protesters as he was a close ally of Bouteflika and represents the same interests of the same coterie of businessmen, army generals, and politicians who are perceived to be wielding real economic and political power behind the president's face. The protesters have continued to demonstrate every week, demanding a complete ousting of the regime. Despite having roots in Algeria's struggle for independence, the regime has given in to corruption and nepotism, which is perceived to be taking a toll on the living standards of the masses. No elections under the gang's rule was one of the popular slogans heard during the mobilizations in May, where tens of thousands of students took to the streets calling for the resignation of Ben Salah and carrying banners that called for a boycott of the election. Finally, we take you to Honduras, where thousands of doctors, nurses, teachers, and citizens have continued occupying major roads and highways against the privatization of the public health and education sectors in the countries. The mobilizations have captivated the widespread anger and frustration felt by many Hondurans due to the endemic corruption, violence, and poverty in the country. They have also renewed calls to demand the resignation of President Juan Orlando Hernandez, who was re-elected through open and blatant fraud in 2017. Across Honduras, the mobilizations have been met with brutal police repression. Several dozen have been critically injured from police attacks with tear gas, rubber bullets, and in several occasions, attacks with live bullets at protesters. The mobilizations have been spearheaded by the Platform for the Defense of Health and Education, which brings together 18 organizations and trade unions from the health and education sectors. They seek to draw attention to the deep crisis faced by these sectors, which are the key contributing factors to the impoverishment and misery faced by many in Honduras. To give an example, in Honduras there are only 31 public hospitals to treat the entire population. These hospitals face a shortage of medicine, medical supplies, laboratory services, and the buildings themselves are decaying due to lack of investment. Despite treatment being free in public hospitals, patients are often forced to pay out of their pockets to, for supplies and medicines. In the last several days, the government has called on the organized sectors to dialogue, but protesters are wary. The government announced that it suspended the decrees in question, but given its track record, without any concrete proof, Many remain wary. At the same time, key leaders from the platform have been receiving serious threats to their lives and integrity by government authorities, mainstream media, and right-wing thugs. The president of the Honduras Medical College and central leader in these protests, Zuyapa Figuera, said, one does not sit in dialogues with a gun to the head. We will not sit with those who persecute us. That's all we have time for in this episode of Around the World in 8 Minutes. For more such stories, check out our website, peoplesdispatch.org, and our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.